This video is about breadboarding electronic components and creating simple circuits. So this is a breadboard. Breadboards are very useful, also called a protoboard. It's a reusable platform that we can create a circuit in, rearrange the circuit, and build a new circuit. So why use a breadboard? Well, it takes a lot less time and money to use a breadboard uh, to design and fabricate, prototype your circuit than it would if you had to create a PCB or a printed circuit board. Here's what a printed circuit board looks like. As you can see, there's sections that are, have metal, there are holes for the different components to fit in, and then there's other sections that don't have any metal. And so the metal here connects one part, one component, with another component according to the wiring diagram schematic that was created. So you can see this is rather complicated. Even a simple one does take a little time to process and create. This is what a circuit board would look like with all the components attached. And this would be, uh, if you're going to put something in market, you're going to sell to people, this is how you would do it. But for prototyping, we want to use the breadboard. All right. Also, the cost is low, so that way we can save our money as we're working towards our final design. So the breadboard also allows the designer to observe how and if the actual circuit's going to work the way that the designer intended. Breadboards give the ability to change the components right you might want to switch one resistor for another or a different capacitor uh, is needed instead of the capacitor that you're using they allow uh, you to quickly facilitate the measurements of your voltages and your current and your resistance so breadboards very very handy devices for engineers and designers so let's take a look at the internal workings of a breadboard this is usually where students get a little confused so inside on the top we see a plastic cover with lots of holes we see some rows and we see some columns inside there are rows of metal everywhere that row of metal is all the holes that align with that metal are going to be in common all right you connect to one you'll be connected to any others so let's see how that works so here we have a close-up you can see it's numbered one two three four down the side and a b c d across the top and there's little holes that we can stick our wires in over here on the side with these red lines show where the everything is interconnected so everything in this little row here along this red line is connected to each other same thing with this red line and you can see they're marked plus and negative so these are good places to bring in your power supply you can see we have the same thing on the other side then on the rows this row here a b c d e is all interconnected f through j is also interconnected but F through J is not connected to A through E. We want to use as few jumper cables as possible. We want to use the internal strips inside the breadboard as much as we can. And we want to keep those jumper cables short. The shorter they are, the neater everything is. The longer they are, it gets a lot harder to diagnose uh, problems. You have to move this wire and this wire to see where things are connected. Breadboard circuits should closely match the layout of the wiring schematic. It helps you with your troubleshooting. The schematic, or the wiring diagram, uh, can be checked off as you go, as you hook in the wires and components. Cut the component leads short, not too short, but you want to cut them a little shorter, and that's going to avoid contacts uh, in shorts. And then, of course, have your partner or somebody else check it for errors, especially if you're having trouble. So let's talk about the diode. We're all familiar with LEDs. Well, that's a light-emitting diode. And you can see we have a picture of one here on the right side. This is the symbol for a wi uh, diode. You notice it has an arrow. Diodes only let current through in one direction, from the positive to the negative, or the anoid to the cathode. There's a large metal piece inside that you can see in some diodes that's connected to the negative or the cathode and the cathode is also the shorter one so we want our current to travel into the longer wire up and over and into the negative which is the shorter don't trim these we want to preserve the fact that one is longer than the other now resistors we've seen resistors before they have the little zigzag pattern for our symbol and this is what a resistor looks like in real life, one version of resistor. You can notice the color pattern. Resistors control the amount of current. They resist the flow 
of the current. Our resistor is typically used to control the amount of current that's flowing in our circuit, and the resistance is going to be measured in ohms, or the little headphone symbol here, right, which is the omega symbol. Named after George Ohm, who of course came up with Ohm's Law that helps us define our relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. So here we on this page you can see we have several different types of resistors. The variable resistor is often uh, it's an interesting uh, choice. It's basically it's, it's called a potentiometer also. When you turn the volume up and down on a component, you're probably adjusting a variable resistor or a potentiometer. This shows the different sizes of resistors in comparison to a dime. So how do we determine the value of our resistors? Well, one way is the color codes. There are bands of different colors on this resistor, there's three on this one, and then this gold one is for tolerance, that if you read these, you can know what the resistance is. The other way is, of course, to use a multimeter. Set it for ohms and measure from one side of the resistor to the other. So let's take a look at how to read the color codes. So you can see there's several different resistors here, but they all have three different bands. This one's backwards. The gold or the silver should be on the right. We should actually start reading from this side here. So let's take a look. First band. Here's our different colors that we could have, from black all the way to white. And you can notice there's a number assigned to each color. Second band, also a number assigned to each color, same numbers as we used for the first band. And then the third band is our multiplier. So 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 1, 10, 100, 1,000, so on. This is the number of zeros, basically, or the multiplier that we need to apply as we read our color codes. So let's take a look at some examples. So here we have a brown, a black, and a multiplier of red. Well, the brown is 1. The black is 0, so that's 10, right? 1 and a 0. And then the third band, the multiplier, is red, or 100. So if we have a 1, a 0, and then two more zeros, you got 1,000. And we can see that here. So 10 times 100, plus or minus 5%, because of the gold tolerance is 5%, is 1,000 ohms, or 1 kilo ohm. All right, so that's a very common resistor, the brown, black, red. Here's another one. Pause the video and see if you can determine what is the value of this resistor that's orange, white, and green, and a tolerance of gold. All right, well, when you read the, the value of this resistor by its color codes, you should have noticed that the orange was 3, the white is 9, and the green is 100,000. We have a 3, a 9, times 100,000 or 3,900,000 ohms, or 3.9 mega ohms, with a tolerance of 5%. Is that what you got? Here's another example. This resistor needs to be 1.5 kilo ohms. So if it needs to be 1.5 kilo ohms, what color pattern would you find on that resistor? Pause the video and try to figure it out. Well, if you decided that you should have a brown, a green, and a red, with a gold tolerance, very good. You did an excellent job. That would be 1.5 kilo ohms. So use it in a multimeter to measure the resistance. That's our other method. Remember to place the multimeter in the correct range. So ohms or resistance is in this green section right here. Place the two probes on either end of the resistor and the LCD screen will read out the measurement for you. Thank you for listening and watching.